What's going on you guys, your boy Eddie Maximilian back again for another video. In today's video, we're gonna be lowering the 2024 Aprilia RS660 with the Motorrad Technic lowering link in combination with either an Alibaba special kickstand or a Supi's adjustable kickstand. So the first thing I want to do uh, before we lower the bike or we start any type of work, I want to show you guys what the bike looks like with me on it. I am five foot one without boots, five foot two with boots. The lowering link is going to lower almost an inch and a half. It's going to be pretty significant. I'll probably be able to not flat foot, but very near flat foot uh, the bike. If I roll it over, I can barely touch the ground on this side. You can see the, the floor, right? Yeah, so this is what it sits like if I were to put my butt in the center. So this is not comfortable at all for a five foot one rider. Maybe if you were five foot six, you'll be able to get your foot down. The Aprilias usually sit pretty high. Okay, so that was the before. And after we're all said and done, I'll do that again and we'll see what it looks like for the app. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we need to remove the shock off the bike. We need to access the bottom bolt down here as well as the top bolt. The shock needs to be removed. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to remove the rear mud guard, the chain guard on both sides, and then also both sides of the uh, bearings because we need to get to the top bolt and the bottom bolt. First thing I'm gonna do is just remove this uh, Torx here. This Torx is a T25. And I just pop that on there and get a ratchet and just start cranking away. We're gonna do it on both sides. Okay, that comes out. Uh, second one is going to be right down here and it is the same size Torx. We got two more here on the back. We got one more here on the front, right above the chain. This pops out now. So here we see the bolt uh, that we need to remove. It's right in there. But just so we have a little bit more room, we're gonna remove this mud guard on uh, the bolt on the other side as well. Okay. And then that should pop right out. Like so. Perfect, now we have plenty of working room. We're gonna remove this nut. Uh, I believe this is, looks like a 15 or 17. And then an Allen on the other side. For the Allen, it's gonna be an eight. Allen for the nut is going to be a 15 millimeter. Okay, I think that's it. okay, so the nut is out, 15 millimeter, put that to the side. We're gonna grab a rubber mallet and just an extension and we're gonna use this as a punch. We're gonna go on the other side and just line it up right here and then just give it a couple whacks to come right out. So we need to support the bottom of the bike because right now the, the suspension is under load. So we're just gonna put a car jack stand under uh, a car jack under here and just start lifting it up just until the point where it removes the pressure off off the engine itself and the suspension and under here there is a, there is a fairing under here and I don't want to put the jack under this fairing because it will damage the fairing and I don't want to um, mess up a customer's bike so we're going to put it right under the exhaust and jack it up from this point Okay, put it right around there. And then, so this doesn't mar up the bottom of the exhaust. I'm gonna put a wooden block right on here, just so we have some type of support. And then we can go ahead and start. Okay, okay. so right there is just fine. Now we can go ahead and finish uh, removing that bolt we remove the bolt we're just going to put it with the with the nut so we don't lose it and put it to the side now with uh that bolt removed we can we can easily uh, access the the bottom portion of 
the, uh, the shock. However, the portion that we're gonna be changing out in the kit is located at the very top, somewhere up here, and we have absolutely no access to it, so we're gonna have to remove both sides just to see what we're working with. There's an Allen here, and this is a four Allen. To remove the seat, key goes in, twist, and pull up. <laughs> okay, and then the front seat also comes off. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. This is same thing. This is also a four. Okay, that to the side. Now this should come right out. You always wanna be careful with these clips because they're very brittle and they can break. There we go, okay. There we go. So it's, it's, uh in and forward to install and out and down to uh, remove. Right through here, you can see the Allen at the, the top of the strut there or shock. And I just wanna check out, we'll do the same thing on the other side, just to see if there's a, a nut on the other side as well. out that way and down. Cool, so here's the other side, this one right here. So it, it looks like it's the same thing as the bottom. So probably a 15 and an eight. Yeah, there's enough room in there to get a deep socket with an extension and the same deal on the other side. So we're at, where are we at, right here. Looks like it's a relay or some sort of rubber grommet here that's not allowing me to, I, I, think, I think this is in the way. So we're gonna have to remove that too. this should pop out so what I'll do is I'll slide this um, looks like it goes on a bracket it's like a rubber there we go it's like a rubber fuse or a relay or sensor we're gonna put that put it out of the way now we should have access to that I got uh, Brian here behind the camera you're gonna want uh, some help with this portion maybe get an extra set of hands he's gonna hold this side on the uh with a ratchet and i'll go to the other side with with a, a bigger ratchet and we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the top of the shock to remove the shock so that we can service the shock got the big boy out he's holding the other side i'm just gonna go ahead and crank away once you loosen it up it should come out fairly easy because remember we are supporting the the whole engine uh from underneath from the exhaust here try this So it comes out, there's just enough clearance. There's another one of those annoying brackets there, but if you kind of like finagle it, it'll come out. And just for comparison, uh, the hardware is exactly the same. So if you want to put the bottom on the top or top of the bottom, doesn't matter, uh, they're identical. So thank you, shout out to Aprilia for that because a lot of companies like to switch up their hardware. Okay, so now that that is removed. Okay, so now that everything's removed, we should be able to just lift up and out. And there you go. Here is your suspension for the rear for an Aprilia RS660. Now, um, I wanna show you something on the kit. Here's the top part. Be very careful not to lose the uh, these little um, spacers and washers because this does provide some sort of uh, dampening. I want you guys to note that the um, Aprilia RS660 up until 2023, the, they changed the shock um, for the 2024. So any lowering kits that are out there right now on the market, there's one called Truist, I believe is the brand. Uh, the customer brought me that and after some research, it turns out that this is different and this is different. So be very um, careful in what you order. Make sure you get it for the specific year. 2024, they did change this up. So you're gonna need to get the top portion to get swapped out. Uh, in order for us to remove the top portion, we are going to have to compress this spring. In order to compress the spring, I have a spring compressor from the video I did about two years ago, a Duke 390. We did the lowering for a customer and this is what we used. So the instructions call for removing any type of preload completely from the bike. I'm just going to make a little mark on the threads so that I know how far up to go. So what I'm doing is I'm just coloring the threads with some Sharpie and that way I know wh when to stop. So we're gonna grab a rag 
put this in a vise to keep it from marring the finish. Even though it is hidden from view, we still don't want to mar a finish. I'm gonna tighten up the vise. Oh, that's pretty solid. And then we're just gonna grab our tools and go ahead and loosen these up. Instructions call to uh, loosen it all the way to the bottom so it won't go anymore. Come around. No, the whole thing is spinning though. So if the whole thing is spinning, I have to flip Hold it. Yeah. see so now we have the uh, the spring is completely loose here okay so it looks like we have to compress the spring far enough down so that this can um, come to the I guess the silver portion here of the actual shock and then this will just slide out and then we we'll replace it with the new one I'm really hoping that I don't have to get a separate spring compressor for this job seeing that I, I already have one. This will be really sweet if the KTM stuff works for the Aprilia. One side is bigger than the other. So let's just measure and see which side works and which side doesn't. Yes, oh my God, it does work. <laughs> so KTM tools work for an Aprilia um, R660 is what it looks like. So, so yeah, so the wider portion of the tool will go right over this silver plate like so and then the other side will go underneath and then we'll use an impact driver to compress as far down as we can and then we'll be able to remove this replace and then just reverse the process and we're done so not a super hard job you just definitely have to have the right tools and an extra set of hands or a buddy that can help you uh, for pretty much half a day uh, we're going to put this over like so and it fits perfectly. I'll put it on the ground so it probably work better here. Just gotta line these up, get some threads going by hand. Yep. Other side as well. So three quarter or 17 at the top. We're gonna go ahead and tighten it. And we're gonna do both sides equally so we don't have a weird compression make sure this is lined up right underneath and this on the top keep going okay now we're compressing so we're gonna go ahead and Again, use your rag so you don't mar your finish. Use the vice grip to hold the strut in place. All right, and then now we're just gonna compress the spring to remove the top cap. Again, applying the same amount of pressure to both each time you go. Slow process, but I think we're almost out here. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we're replacing. We're just gonna reverse the process. So this spring goes in first. Not sure exactly what this does, but it says it needs to go in. So that's what we're gonna do. And then this top part goes in as well. It looks like we might need to, okay, yeah. We might need to go down. Okay, 
that should be enough room now. Yes, okay. So we slide that in, make sure that it's seated with the top here. And then now we're just gonna decompress. We're gonna decompress the spring and this should allow this to seat perfectly flush with the spring. Okay, so we just loosen it all the way out. So. I would take this out now and just tighten it. Yeah, now we just tighten it. Okay, cool. So, take our spring compressor out. Okay, so now that the top is on. We're just going to go ahead and adjust the preload back to what it was. And do it as far as you can by hand. And then we're going to use our tools and tighten it all the way down. All right, so after kind of like playing around with this setup, um, the important part is this wave spring that it's come with. This is what it's called. It's called a wave spring. You have to make sure that you have at least two points of contact on the spring. So you have the bottom of the wave here, the bottom of the wave here touches, and then if we turn it uh, this way, there is nothing touching here because this is the um, there's a disconnect in the spring. So there's nothing touching here, but there is one on this side and one on the opposite side. As long as you have two points of contact, you're good. If you don't, then that means that the, the wave spring is uh, sideways. Okay, so now while we have that in, in its place, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the up to tighten the spring some. And the Sharpie line that I made before isn't gonna be used because um, this already takes uh, about an inch and a half off. If you notice the difference, between the two. From here to here, this is how much we're uh, lowering. It doesn't look like a lot, but it is significant once you uh, get the bike down on, on the wheels. And go ahead and just tighten up the preload. So what we're looking to do is to make sure that the top of the spring is seated with the top of the plate. And that's when we will stop the adjustment. All right, so let's just install it as is. We have to do some adjustments while this is in the bike anyway, but the hardest part is done. The, the piece has been removed, it's been replaced. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, adjust this all the way to the top by hand here. And then looks like, yeah, we're gonna have to loosen this a bit uh, because right now it's super stiff, but we can't really figure out how much stiffness there is in the spring until we install it on the bike. So let's do that now. These uh, washers are really annoying. They keep popping out. So one goes in here on one side and the other one goes, no, does that go this way? So, since this thing is being a little annoying and I can't get the strut in the, in the bike without this falling out and this needs to be in there before the bolt goes through, I'm just gonna put a little bit of electrical tape right here to keep it in place. And then once I get the bolt in, I'll rip this out. That's the only thing I could think of well, right now. I'm gonna try this in. Check the other side, see if it's like, what's uh, what's hitting, I can't tell. 
go, right there. Right there? All right. All right, good. All right, guys, so once you have your bolts in through the top, use that little trick I did with the painter's tape, get the bolt through, push it all the way through, um, have your buddy hold the opposite side with the Allen or the nut or whatever, and then you're gonna wanna torque down both the top and bottom bolts to 50 Newton meters. There we go, okay, so that's 50, and then rinse and repeat for the bottom one here. Slide that up. Way. Go ahead and get that bolt in. There we go. Perfect. Cool. Same deal here. 50 newton meters. And now we're gonna go ahead and put our seat back on. And we are going to adjust the preload or the tension on the the shock itself. And according to the instructions here, H is clockwise and S is softer, which is counterclockwise. So we want to go clockwise a few clicks and, and then we'll see what it, what it feels like. To get to the adjustment uh, screw, it's a flat head. You have to pull all this back and then it's, it's right in there. Perfect, yeah, that little flat head screw right there, that's where we're gonna turn. So clockwise is harder and counterclockwise is softer. So right now we're going to click it. I'm gonna say three clicks clockwise, which is firmer. And it'll, it'll make a couple of clicking noises. So right now it's the firmest setting. Oh yes, <laughs> it's like stiff as a rock. <laughs> right now it's the firmest setting. Let's see what that feels like compared to what it was before yeah nah, this is like this is like <laughs> this is too hard so uh, we're going to uh, back it out about let's say uh, four clicks and then retest the the stiffness of the actual spring okay, so we're going back here again and softer would be counterclockwise one two three four okay let's try that now it feels different might have to go to to the stiff side but let's see what four feels like okay yeah this this feels this feels pretty good there's a little bit of a sag, but not, nothing like, like you're hitting rocks. Um, I would like to maybe me and you switch and see how you, you, you sit on it. The guy who owns this bike, you weigh like what, 180? 195. 195, all right, I'm 120. So the guy, he weighs probably like 160. So he's right in between us. So if it's, this is too soft for you, we'll go a little stiffer. For me, it's just right. And then that's how we'll determine where we stand on the stiffness. How does that feel? Uh, feels, good. feels good? Okay. Yeah? Definitely. Okay, cool. So we'll leave it like that and I'll just have him come and sit on it and see how he likes it. Maybe he wants it softer or firmer. Everybody has different riding style or preference and that's okay. Um, but for both Brian and myself, this is, I feel like it's fine. Uh, I tend to ride a little bit more on the stiffer side because I'm used to track. Some people just ride street, so that's okay. All right, so you hold that. So suspension is done, preload is done, adjustable kickstand is done. Now we're going to go to the front of the bike and we need to get weight off of the front um, suspension. So in order to do that, the way I do it is I grab a block, my trusty wooden block. I put it underneath the kickstand. I stand the bike up with this under the kickstand, okay? And then now the bike is sort of straight up. And now we're gonna get a jack under here. And then what we're gonna do is remove this, just this side. I think we just remove one side. We'll be, we'll be able to clear one of these, one of these headers. Um, yeah, and then I'll put the jack up to here, jack it from this point, 
and that should raise, um, take pressure off the front of. All right, I do appreciate when engineers make all the bolts exactly the same size. That, that helps so much. So we have the three on the outside and then we have one, two, three on the inside and that'll give us just enough room to disconnect these fairings and we'll be able to finish the front. Okay, I think these just disconnect. Yep, yeah. okay, perfect. Put these here, put that there, put that to the side. Interesting fact about Aprilia, they don't give out the um, the paint coats. So if you mess it up, you can't just go to a body shop and be like, yeah, give me uh, acid gold for Aprilia. They, no one knows what it is, only Aprilia knows. So that's why um, normally when, uh, when you get an accident uh, for an Aprilia, since there is no paint code, if, if they can't take it to a body shop and they can't figure out what the paint is, they normally just total it out, just for a little scratch. Um, sometimes they just price out the parts and these parts are so expensive that the parts are worth more than an assembled bike. So just a little effect. Okay, so back to here. Our kickstand is on the block. Get the header, get the bottom header so we get a little bit more leverage. We have enough. To... Okay, that's it, right? One more? Okay, yeah. Okay, this is free now. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we need. Free play. Okay, so now we're gonna measure uh, the stock setting for the Aprilia. I'm sure my micrometer works. Okay, so 11 millimeters, right? 11? 11, yeah, 11. Okay, let me just, just for shits, let's see if the engineers put 11 on this side as well. Yeah, 11.02. Okay, so 11.02 is the distance between the triple tree and the stock setting. Okay, so if we lowered the rear 35 millimeters, I normally lower it half of the rake or equal. In this case, if you look at the front fork here, this is how much room we have to lower the bike. Right up until here where it tapers off. Once it tapers off, you can't really do much uh, because there's gonna be too much of a gap. On the R7, the lowering that I did on the R7, it's a little bit of a taper and you can usually fill that in with like a shim or electrical tape. But in this one, you just can't. To get our um, forks to come upwards and to have this go downwards, we're going to want to uh, loosen up three Allens. The first one is at the top where the uh, clip-ons go. And the second two are right, right down here where my thumb is touching. There's one up top and then one at the bottom. To loosen up these Allen bolts, we're gonna need a six millimeter long and then a six millimeter shorty at the bottom. If you don't have a six millimeter Allen, you could also use a T40. T40s are uh, essentially the same thing. That one, you don't wanna take it out all the way, just enough to have uh, play in the fork. So that's one. Now we're gonna get to the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up. That's loose. And the farther one on the bottom. There's not a whole lot of room here. Ideally, you wanna take all the fairings off, but I'm not about to do all of that. Got to save some labor. Plus, I don't want to build my customer that much amount if I don't have to. There we go. All right, that goes in. Okay, same thing on this side. Okay, so when you put pressure from the bottom of the fork, there, keep in mind there's no weight on the suspension right now. So I'm gonna lift up from the bottom and it should slide up from where it was 
we're going to want We'll just do what we'll do because we are limited to how far we can go. We're going to go right below the front brake reservoir. So that'll put us at 26, which is fine. So let's do that. Let's tighten it up. This is 24.3. So we got to go just a little more. As far as torque is concerned, we can't really get a torque wrench down there, but you can just tighten it right up into the point where, where it gives you resistance and then just a smidge more, maybe about a, an eighth or a quarter of a turn more past that, and that should be just enough to um, tighten up your, your fork. Moment of truth, uh, we're going to go ahead and drop it off the, uh, the jack stand, lower it back down so that there's weight on the suspension and we're gonna retest the lowering that we did today with me on it. And so we'll move right back down. Now this is, this is better, this is, uh, yeah, this is much better. Check out the difference that we got from the beginning. This feels way, way, way more comfortable. Now, keep in mind that a lot of people say that if you lower the bike, you're gonna ruin the geometry of the bike and yada, yada, yada. That is true, uh, but that only applies to track sessions. So when you do track, the higher your rear set, the better, because you get a better of a lean angle. When you're on the road, you're never really gonna drag knee. I mean, most people don't. Uh, you're just going to be driving around town, uh, maybe a couple highway pulls. It, it won't really matter as long as the rake is equal. So if you do keep in mind that this bike is more of a touring bike. And reason why we know that is because the handlebars have risers on them. There's a little bit of a rise here on the triple tree. There's about a two inch rise here. So these are meant for comfort, for, uh, you know, stability. Uh, so that's why we only went about half an inch in, uh, in the front. This feels really good. I am very happy with this, how this turned out. All in all, it took maybe, it took about three hours. Three hours and a friend. If it was you by yourself, you're looking at five hours, five or six hours for sure. And you might even end up dropping the bike because there was a couple of close calls. So I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much just put everything back to how it was. We don't really need to film that. If you wanna see any other videos related to motorcycles, click on one of these videos right next to me and feel free to comment, like, subscribe, share with your friends. I really appreciate it and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.